uh, how we came up to this illustration is, um, of course, studying what's existing, the surrounding, and learning from, I, I guess, the mistakes of what happened. And we, of course, with, with planning, we have to fo focus more on the accessibility to how do you get point A to point B and even beyond that. So um, we always, we, we started with the transits, um, how, how um, the transition between uh, two-way, one-way, and even pedestrian circulation. And then we generally zone these um, based on well, from our learnings, which is the re relocation of the, um, the civic areas and the organizing the mixed residential and commercial spaces, as well as the assembly and businesses. So it's all, as you can see, it's all um, the circulation is, uh, well, we could still work better, but it, it's easily accessible for each um, zoning we created. So, can I am I clear, sir? Yeah. Audio? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, to add lang to what Tracy said, uh, because we were relating the the composition of the plan to how everything works outside it, then. So, given uh, the other side of the Pasig River is an industrial and not really a sight to see. We wanted to put like um, the green avenue, if that's the right term for it, along the Pasig River to have, yeah, like that, that sketch of what Tracy did, that's how he envisioned it. To have that uh, buffer, buffer space between, and then it would be like a circulation area. Then. So, yeah. and then in reference to the heritage, um, heritage areas like the Aros Aros Forest Park, we wanted to put the mixed-use residential zone in that area so that they have access then to these, even the Mihan Garden and the Metropolitan Theater once it gets functional. And then under in the yellow area, we imagined a commercial, uh, a two-block commercial area to adjacent to the educational uh, buildings such as the Philippine Normal University and Technological College, University of the Philippines. So, blah, blah, blah. and then yung, yung as Tracy said, so yung relocation of the of the ones I asked you kanina, yung Comelec, uh, BILG, and Civil Service Commission. We wanted to place it by the city hall and the ombudsman, just so they're already in the same area. So, okay, yeah, that's what we have. So uh, for for the initial iterate, for the initial scheme, this is actually pretty good. I love the site analysis and then the initial uh, solutions that you provided. You can definitely work in this. It is a shame that you guys are not able to go to the place because if it's face to face, yes. that would be a requirement. You know why? Uh, the only thing lacking here is the referencing of the landmarks so that you can enhance the sense of place. Like how you can reference the, the clock tower of Manila City Hall when you're in the park, when you're walking along the, the, the alleyway. Uh, those are important things because if you just ignore it, then you know, you're know you not taking advantage of the assets of the place. Not to mention the GSIS building. Not to mention if there are other buildings that are worthy of note, uh, worthy to be remembered. And uh, if you can also integrate uh, and connect uh, the LRT Central Station and I redesign it in such a way that it's part of the, the overall development and then uh, it's like you know going to Rockwell but it's a different kind of feel and, and mood and then uh, uh, yeah and that's why uh, uh, although I, I appreciate what Kier did by segregating the heritage buildings um, away uh, I want you guys to create a master plan integrating all of these things uh, the, the 15 hectares or 10 hectares is just meant for the things that uh, you can introduce to the site. But of course, there are areas that need to be untouched, that cannot be touched, such as the Metropolitan Theater and the Arsores Forest Park. But definitely, yes. for developments, it will enhance the city hall complex. So basically, we're creating a city hall type of uh, development. So how do we make this area very memorable as a risky? So we have two two weeks to, to, to work on this before we jump to the to the actual project. 
Okay, pag-practice na natin tong area na to. All right. So for Ah, uh, sir, I have a question lang. Sorry, sir. I think I'm lagging. I didn't mean to butt in. Uh, but if the if the MRT is beyond the development because you know, we have this we have this plot uh, theoretical plot and then there's an MRT along the path uh, avenue. Are we allowed to like touch on that or is it not allowed since we're beyond? Since it's Mihan beyond Garden, the LRT Central Station is in Mihan yeah. Garden, right in front of the Ombudsman. So ah, it, is called, it is it is part of your development. Ah, okay. you, can, uh, you can research how it looks like. It's not, you know, an intricate European type of building, but it is still a heritage building, if I'm not mistaken. So yes. uh, it's something that uh, you can integrate. You can look at uh, developments abroad, like I said, Melbourne and Sydney were good at are good at uh, preserving old buildings, integrating with modern developments. So how do you mm -hmm. do that? Uh, yeah, right. So yeah, I just want I just want to do this fast. So, uh, so for now, that's my comment. You can still change this if you want, but keep in mind the things that we discussed. All right. So, all right, but, uh, but next week I would love to see a. Uh, a 3D diagram showing the massing uh, so that we can uh, appreciate and experience it. Okay, if kayo bahala kung anong medium gusto yung gamitin. Alright? 3D diagram lang siya. Oh, yeah. Okay, sige. Siyempre, diagrams. Para mas marami. So, ano yun? Yeah, mag so, mag so, yung content nun is the revised plan based on yeah. You can still change this no? based on the comments that I provided because Right now, the, the old buildings are still uh, detached from the development. Yes. You, you avoided the if it has a, a, a disease. So, uh, yeah. you know, you need to include it if you have a pedestrianized network. Uh, how to include it? Like, do you imagine mm -hmm. inside the GSIS building to have coffee shops? You know, do you propose GSIS mm -hmm. building to become a museum for Manila? Right. You know, things like that. Okay, see you soon. Okay. okay. But uh, it's good that I also saw that uh, you are developing the traffic as well. All right. So, oh, thank Mark, you, sir. Mark and Jerry. Huh. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. Hello. Uy, uy. Jerry, kung kakabahan. <laughs> Umiyak naman si Jerry. Jerry, um, Jerry, maraming, Jerry, okay lang yan. Maraming, maraming chika dito. Maraming kang tropa na isang chi. So, ayun, sir. Okay. okay. So, medyo slide share din yan, sir. So, so basically, hinati-hati muna namin siya, sir, into zone. So, wait lang, chill lang, Jerry. Balik mo, balik mo. <laughs> so, ayun. So, in this area, sir, um, residential siya, pero hindi siya fully residential. Parang mixed-use mix use pa rin siya ng everything, sir, kasi gusto pa rin namin yung parang street life nun. Pero nilagay dito, namin dito yung residential kasi we want to make, like, gusto namin malapit siya sa mga park, like mga green spaces, like yung Ar Aroceros and also next Jerick's. Jerick. Ano, yung ito is open areas, open spaces, eh, parang in-extend namin sa may ombudsman to hanggang sa may Pasig to parang create a vista na din so, sir. Kasi sa may ombudsman, parang yun lang yung parang pinaka building, tas yung iba open na siya, sir. So in-extend na lang namin siya. And next. So sa part na to is parang mga institutional, pero hindi siya fully institutional pa rin siya, pero mixed use pa rin siya, pero parang majority ng infrastructure dito is mga institutional parang kasi like similar sa like same city sir diba when you're putting parang police station kailangan may certain area lang so parang dito sa place na to is yung perfect place niya kasi may access mabilis yung access niya sa mga residential and yung next is yung parang commercial area din namin sir next Jeric eto ginawa naman siya medyo commercial pero hindi pa rin siya fully commercial like mixed use pa rin siya pero majority noon is commercial kasi nilagay namin commercial dito kasi parang mas okay siya mas malapit siya sa may like municipality hall sir so ayan next so ito naman sir parang like main road yung 
block, sir, na is- naisip namin, sir. So, parang nakabase siya sa cut ng zoning, yung mga main road, para easy access per zone. And next. And itong area naman, sir, parang, parang walking street lang siya, sir. So, para mas ma-appreciate yung passive river. So, walang allowed na cars dyan. So, more on, like, walking area lang yan, sir. Yun pa lang. Okay. And then, oh, oh, sige, go ahead, Jack. Uh, sir, to add on. So, yung placement ng ano namin, which is the yellow, yung residential, and green open space, then yung sa institutional. So, we chose yung parang the middle space, yung open, uh, parang green space. Kasi, uh, since yung green space, ang purpose din nila is to connect uh, parang one one space to another. So, uh, Maganda siyang transition sir to one zone to another. Parang so, for example, for the residential, um, uh, when they want to go to the institutional in mass schools or something, so parang uh, they need to uh, dadaan sila dun sa green space with, yun nga, which connects the both uh, spaces. Ganun sir. Okay, uh, for now, this is actually okay. It's just that um, probably I, d- I don't really re- want to recommend like a certain medium that you're comfortable with, but this is a good example of if you're relying too much on the digital, uh, there's such a thing as uh, it becomes, the, the, the solutions become too rigid as compared to the group, the first group that uh, you saw, they use manual uh, drawing. Uh, that way, uh, the solutions are more softer. They can break it break it more uh, because if you are uh, directly approaching it in a digital manner, you are at the mercy of uh, the digital tools and you are uh, see, you will see the solutions as a, a very simplistic and uh, yeah, very simplistic manner, you know, say it's disaggregate everything when, you know, you can actually break it apart. So uh, that's why I encourage you guys to do it manually and probably, you know, you can sketch on top of the, the the side the drawings that the key are presented so uh yeah and then uh, learn from the, the my comments uh, on the groups as well all right so again thank you um uh, so, let's go to who's next kanina uh community adrius sir so, yeah, go ahead uh jacob uh kita po ba sir yeah, yeah. No, the sharing. Yeah, game. Ayun. Okay. So, um, so unfortunately, sir, hindi na namin, uh, I forgot to save yung documentation for our um process kanina sa um pag decide on what goes where. Pero basically, we decided to take note of yung mga proxim yung mga yung structures along the proximity. So, kunari to um Philippine Normal and then may Adamson, TUP and Santa Isabel. So because marami siya, uh, malapit siya sa mga schools, universities, and colleges, we decided to use the closest area niya for a mixed-use residential, na may halong commercial. Um, and then behind it, because we also noticed na medyo maraming civic structures nearby na ma-offset if we parang rearrange everything. We decided na yung um, adjacent corner dito sa Manila City Hall and along with GSIS, parang medyo magiging homogenous siya in a certain way, like this area here. So we decided to add the, some of the civic buildings here. That was um, means the northern part niya, we decided to turn it into something a little more commercial because it's close to um, the LRT station and because it's adjacent to Aroceros. However, yung commercial spot niya wouldn't be yung mga um, big commercial spaces. Rather, it's going to be small commercial businesses lang because we wanted to make Aroceros parang yung, uh, we didn't want to dwarf Aroceros in any way. So we still wanted people to see it as a viable option in case they're going to go here for or something. So um, that's why we assigned it that way. And then yung dito sa central part, medyo mixed siya na um, business, office, and civic buildings along with a few residential blocks because um, we believe na yun yung magiging pinaka private na area. So it's going to be less commercialized, but more of um, you know, like yung private uh, areas. So, so far, sir, this is what we have so far. Um, Adrius, may dadagdag na pa ba? Good 
Okay. Uh, if you if you remember what my comment was on the Max and Jerry, try to draw it. Para uh, it's more um, in a way uh, more. You're more connected to your plan. It this feels as if uh, it's uh, uh, you know disconnected from the place. And by the way, when you are planning a city, uh, uh, don't inhibit or don't uh, what they call it. Um, don't limit yourself. You can actually rearrange everything except for you know the the, the elements that are regarded to be. Um, Regarded to be non-negotiable, such as the buildings, heritage buildings, etc. Et but of course, if you are going to modify the existing condition, you will need to propose an alternative because you know you are modifying the traffic system. You are also modifying how people will move around, etc. Those are the things that you need to consider when you are planning uh, this thing. So I guess it's good that we started with the work of Tracy and Kevin because it's a, to the work. That they showed it's a little more advanced. They showed some areas for the pedestrian, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's how I read it. And then uh, some areas for the for for the vehicle, etc. The, the only thing, the negative comment lang that I can remember is uh, you know, not referencing the physicality of the place. All right, Jacob. So this is a first try, so this is okay. Uh, but uh, I guess uh, you guys will have to learn from each other. All right. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob and Ibrius. Uh, so who's next? Bea, I don't know. Ah, Silan, sige, go ahead. Oi. Sorry, sir, nawala. Wait lang. I see. Can you see it, sir? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. The purple one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. So uh, the way we designed it, we had a few goals in mind. So first of all, parang uh, isa sa mga naging initial ideas nam is we wanted to maintain the vista or the viewpoint going to the city hall. Kasi napansin namin na parang ang ganda makita yung, especially yung tower part, yung clock tower part ng city hall. Pero medyo disappointing kasi you can only see it at some areas in Manila, especially lang usually sa western side, kasi ang tataas ng buildings sa east side, uh, especially dahil dun sa SM and yung LRT. So uh, we kept in mind that we wanted to maintain an open space to you know, create a vista going to the city hall. Then <clears throat> another thing is that gusto rin na, uh, uh, we wanted to uh, reduce the dependency on cars, so more walkability. And with that, we tried to use green spaces as the connections between buildings. So uh, and yung green parts dyan, uh, not necessarily parts, more on the connections and ano, uh, uh, ayun, green space siya, pero uh, 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 what I'm trying to say is it's not really parts, but more of uh, uh, transition space between the areas. Also, uh, we wanted to use the river as a uh, transportation. So, uh, ayun, naglagay kami ng ferry in one side. And, yeah. So, and so when we were designing it, uh, instead of thinking about, uh, thinking about it as a district or just a normal city block, city block, we wanted to think about think about it as a organism. So that's why we have a, a agriculture area here for the sustain self sustainability of the vicinity. So, like what Julian said, um, instead of having cars, we used uh, the green spaces to make it more human, and then. Uh, just like how Burnham wanted uh, the capital to be uh, on the center here, and then there's a green space, and then uh, around the park is a residential area so that the parks can be used directly. So 
compared to Luneta, there's not much residential in the area. That's why uh, it's not very utilized. So uh, we use that concept around the building. And here we can see the transportation hub. So here we connected the LRT station to a larger building. So that lar larger building also doubles as a parking lot so that uh, all the transportation hubs are in this north side. Here's the ferry and here's the LRT and for the cars. And then we re relocated the utilities once located here to here on the south near to the Manila City Hall so that the government offices are close together. And then uh, also, we, also you, kind of, uh, we didn't, we wanted to uh, put it away from the Arroceros part. Yes, so that there's no buffer space from the residential area or the parks to, to the park. And then uh, this offices, office spaces uh, are close to the main road here so that it can be easily accessed. Uh, that's that's all. Okay. Uh, okay. I appreciate the vistas. Definitely, it's a, it's a good idea. It's one thing that I find lacking in of the first group. Uh, just, just keep in mind that when you are zoning the uses, if it's going to be city hall, um, I don't think you'd want to live where you know people will be crowding. Um, and that will be a very busy street. You know what I mean? It's like a like uh, I forgot the name in Barcelona, but uh, it's something like that. That uh, I imagine. Um, also, uh, it also gave me an idea just to just to. Have, have you guys been to a city hall? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Sir. Try to imagine that this is a complex for city hall stuff. No, uh, stuff, not staff, stuff. Uh, meaning you do your you know uh, government stuff, you get papers, etc. So what kind of lifestyle center that you uh, will you develop? Of course, there will see be, be some uh, residential uh, residential components. But what if you know going to the city hall is like going to a mall when you have different sections, but it's in a city format? Do you know what I mean? So oh, actually, actually, sir. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to. Uh, the these areas are actually uh, similar to. Uh, Avenida, what, what you cited as, as an example. So we wanted all the spaces here to be also commercial on the lower part so that the residential areas are elevated. Okay. Well, okay. So yeah, we will discuss that later on because uh, while I, while I of course, uh, mention uh, the, the value of uh, mixed uses, uh, um, in a in some situations, especially in this particular area, there are some instances where it might not be saleable. Greenbelt, for instance, if you're familiar uh, with the Italianis area, uh, wholesome table, the one on top is actually a townhouse townhouse development. Did you ever notice that? No, sir. And nobody wants to live there because it's just so noisy. They get it? So there's a uh -huh. change of culture. So uh, it's... It, I'm not saying that it's not possible, but uh, I think in order for have to, in order for us to have that kind of uh, morphology or setup, there has to be a critical mass. We're in probably one whole district is like that. But if it's going to be just a small portion of the city, it might be. And then if I'm going to be a, a buyer of a residential property, simply I'm going to look for a place that is more quiet. They get it? But if it's uh, the entire city is like that, let's say Barcelona or and the other, other cities that are super mixed use, then it won't matter. They get it? But you're talking about City Hall. You're talking about you know, a very small portion of this, this development. So uh, again, it's all about assessment. You need to assess the situation and the context. They get it? But I uh, appreciate the idea. All right? Okay, yes, sir. Okay, right, thank, yeah. you. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sir, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, ano sa tingin niyo, sir, yung best 
uh, land use for the area around the, yung within the vicinity of City Hall, if not residential? Do you think commercial spaces is a good idea? What do you think? Like if you go to uh, to City Hall uh, and then you're, <laughs> li you're, lining up, you're lining up to get your cedula and then outside, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to uh, okay. outside City Hall? You know, it's a it's a basic human question. You know, when, when uh, you know when you're when you go around the city, okay? So you get okay. Okay. Who's next? Vea and Jao, and then Francis. Oh, can you see it, sir? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I think before we start, I think we have to mention how we kind of like started it. Mm -hmm. And like with our instincts, we kind of, for example, the green spaces, uh, we kind of made SM more of a green space with like some of the commercial uh, parts. And then we kind of identified like what we want to do with like this idea of a pedestrian loop maybe uh and then for me i kind of before i started zoning uh kind of just a, did a quick uh idea of like uh of proximity of like public social personal and intimate and so it kind of looked like this in the end and then, yeah, I think Bea will talk about the green spaces and like what we did with um, the central terminal. Yeah. Okay. So when we were looking at the plan, what we looked at first was the position of the the LRT terminal, which was at the top part next to the school in front of the monument and stuff. And then we thought of kind of placing that in another space, which was near the commercial and green spaces, because we wanted to kind of create this um, transition from that form of transportation to the rest of the community, because having the LRT placed there and having it just be like a walkway going up felt so, like such a sudden um, change and stuff. So then we wanted to kind of incorporate it into the rest of the um, activities. So then the green space would form as like a buffer to the commercial space. And then that green space would spread out and um, kind of be a connecting part to the pedestrian loop that would go around the area. Because we the pedestrian loop kind of aims to influence more of a, um, like people to be able to walk and possibly even bike within, within the area and encourage that kind of form of um, movement around the space. And then, so after thinking about that, we thought of the zoning, which um, the next slide, like the, um, we kind of kept to the road plan that was put there, but then looking at the other presentations, we kind of figured out that we could kind of replace the roads into our own grid style which we could do later on, but yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, you have to go through this process so that somehow, you know, you, you can learn uh, how, what you can do with this space and, and then by sharing uh, your work with others, uh, you can see the possibility of what, what, what you could have done. Um, and then later on, um, probably introduce better ideas. Um, and there's no other way but to do that. And then you can also integrate the other uh, buildings, important buildings in the area. Okay, so uh, this is a good attempt, but uh, definitely, you know, you can do so much better. All right. Like I said, the idea of the, the loop, it's just one thing, but the moment you replan everything, it, uh, you know, that, that will change. And then uh, I don't think you just want to walk around the loop. Probably you, you, you provide options to, to, to sort of traverse uh, the the chunk 
so that uh, you don't have to go all the way around just to get to your destination. So, you know, um, urban mobility is all about options. So, uh, yeah, so you need to add more ideas to that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Francis, Martin. Okay. Um, hi, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so first of all, we took advantage of the, the LRT station that you were saying, like it's a bad thing to have such a high elevated uh, position for the LRT. So, already there. Um, it's, um, yun nga. so instead of make, um, picking it as a disadvantage, you use that it as an, how we use it as an advantage just since uh, Central Station is up above. And in front of that, there are actually so many buildings in front of it. So what we thought now, instead of, why not make it a Vista instead, so there would be an advantage for the station. So um, on the upper part of the map, the public garden, since it's a uh, flat land na lang siya, and it's mostly uh, natural elements, mga trees for people, mm -hmm. and uh, beside that is already the Pasig River. So in a way, if you're in the Kuna Central Station, there's already a vista there that you can see the 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 trees, the park, people, and next to it is the the Pasig River, no. And okay. then um okay. And then there are actually um on the upper right. Sorry, I'm not controlling the screen, so I'll try my best to explain it. So on the upper right, actually, of the map, though they were actually condos there beside Asa Manila. And I think it was a bad space to put the condo since it blocked the Pasig River. And it's really, it's really, they're like in, within the within the border. Those condos were actually the highest buildings, and it was so it was a bad spot. So we tried relocating it uh, to the lower right part near the. I think this is uh, what's the name of the street? Loton, yeah. This one we put it near Loton, so it doesn't really um, block the view, and it's closer to the. It's closer to the city. And then we added another park, the municipal park. So this municipal park is basically less trees and more man-made uh, features like the concrete. Because the bus is outside of City Hall, um, near Padre Burroughs. There's like an outside, uh, like a small, like a small park. Don't you my flag, sir? It's where usually ATM do sila naga gather for the, for uh, some morning activities. And it was kind of small considering how much activities are done in the City Hall. So we made a municipal park, not only for the government, for the city hall, but also for people. So in a way, they can do the seminars here outside. Um, and siguro mga speeches or other government-related uh, things. So they have their own space. Plus, it's also a space for the people. And then there were, in the center of it, there were actually government buildings. I think uh, DFA was one. So... Um, yung purple, that's actually the government, uh, the institutional building. Although we weren't really sure of what uh, government building to go with. We were hoping for something like DNR or uh, Department of Tourism so they would be able to uh, look up, look over the, the parts and the, the war. So the orange one is more on, it's also like a commercial space, but it's mostly leisure. It's like a harbor square, sir, if you're familiar, dun sa my Ross Boulevard. So it's a mixture of basically uh, a one big plaza. And then on the other part, there are mostly cafes and restaurants. So um, in a way, the whole the whole area beside the Pasig River within the border becomes a it's parang wala, wala siyang buildings, it's all commercial, it's all it's all leisure related activities. And then for the blue ones is mostly the commercial. It's mostly uh for convenience. So it so it's um since there are three spots for the commercial and they're scattered, so peep, they're accessible in they're accessible from the park, accessible from the residential areas, and also from the government buildings. Uh, so you know, see Francis, I think he's gonna add something. Sir. 
Oh, okay. So, um, yung observe namin, sir, yung yung site, um, ako mismo, nag-focus ako dun sa LRT, yung Central Station. And since yung volume ng mga tao na sumasakay at bumababa dun sa um, L- LRT na Central Terminal, we wanted to add um, another form of transportation. Kaya naglagay, naglagay kami ng ano, wharf, sir. Since, um, imagine din namin na since um, SMC, if I remember it correctly, um, they have plans to clean the Pasig River and imagine din namin na parang if the ferry stations would be 100% functional and magamit lahat ng ferries like consistently pwede siyang ano parang almost better alternative um, I mean additive siguro in terms of transportation and yung presence ng public parks and um, yung municipal parks or it could serve it could also serve as a buffer zone kasi yung um, traffic near Manila City Hall and yung Lawton area is sobrang heavy especially in rush hour and sobrang ingay so since may residential area kami dyan, um the municipal park would could serve as a perfect buffer zone for the sound and um ma isolate yung residential area from the traffic um noise galing dun sa um city hall area so yun lang sir for me okay uh i think for the information of everyone i think the government has a 10 meter easement requirement along the Pasig river so that needs to be kept open for the purpose of uh uh, access and uh, park development or waterfront development. So uh, this idea is actually good because it's along that line of thinking. So uh, again, develop it based on the comments that I provided uh, with others. I think you need to integrate, you know, the physicality and uh, the assets of the the site. And um, one thing that everyone should also consider is that in planning, whether it's a city or a building typology especially if it's commercial, there's such a thing as efficiency ratio. There has to be 30% uh, non-saleable uh, non-sale, uh, and then 70% saleable so that the development will earn. Do you get it? The big, the bigger the, the saleability, the better it is for the one who's developing it. So in our case, kasi, if this is going to be uh, a commercial venture uh, that sort of enhances the place, then we need to observe that requirement. So the open spaces, the ones that are not going to sell will have to be reduced. All right. That's the reality of it. Okay. Because, you know, if we don't have that, then we, can, we don't have projects because uh, at the end of the day, it's all about commercial viabilities. Okay. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, Mark, Thank you, sir. Mark and Thank you, then, sir. Uh, okay, sir. Darren and then. Yeah, so uh, what we did uh, is actually a step-by-step process. Like we try to identify the elements, current, like the current elements of the vicinity, and then we tried to do like a short SWOT analysis. And um, we also figured that, um, like for example, like they're very close with one another, and um, we could use that as a strength, but also it also kind of a weakness because um, like with the the density of the population, so uh, also the volume of cars and all the other all the other stuff, it causes um, congestion and um, that also could lead on to um, to different environmental issues. Also, we kind of discovered the social and cultural disruption that's kind of a threat in the vicinity because, um, uh, yeah, it's very, very close, very dense. So what we did is, uh, yeah, what we did is for the first one, the institution and the governmental uh, office, we kind of uh, put it this, uh, near the city hall since uh yeah for it's like a one-stop shop for them 
and then uh yeah and then uh the blue ones are the commercial spaces also given that the one below is pnu and the other side is dup i think and then it's also like a perfect hub for students from the vicinity like so this from intramuros like they usually go to this place and we kind of incorporated it na parang it could be like a place where they could enjoy as well and then we kind of put the uh residential spaces here uh in this uh two blocks and the other one is near the uh station since um we kind of want to lessen the like the hassle or the commuters and yeah and then we kind of wanted to have that part of recreational area near the Pasig River given that um there's a possibility that it could be functional it could be clean and all so yeah mark um i answer um since yung nasa gitna, yung antag yun, yung ombudsman, hindi siya pwede galawin. Dineside namin na lahat ng institutional government offices na uh, naka-align lang sa kanya para tuloy-tuloy lang yung sa government. And we wanted to utilize yung Pasig River by creating a long green recreational area. Tapos gusto namin ma-enjoy siya ng lahat. So, hinati-hati namin yung commercial and yung residential pieces. Pero wala pa kaming road network, sir. I, um... uh, I guess you guys need to do this more. <clears throat> because, mm-hmm. uh, uh, for example, uh, the, the green recreational spaces, it's just too, um, what do you call that? It's too zone out. It's like, it is not really properly distributed that everyone will be able to enjoy it and then you're not really ah, yes, sir. you're still not connecting access and vistas etc so uh, the ideas are not that strong yet as i keep talking about the the works of the others that have really good assets in their ideas and i'm sure you will see that initially uh, uh, later on but initially it's not understandable that uh, you guys are just going to try how you're going to segregate spaces like as if you are doing a floor plan. Um, you need to put yourself as a person experiencing the space, so experiencing the city. So, uh, and um, and again, don't look at it as if uh, the scale is the same because it's going to be very different if it's going to be a city project because uh, it's going to be more massive. All right. So, uh, yes, okay, you keep iterating. And then uh, make sure that you integrate the, the 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 assets of the place, and then um, while you plan for accessibility, for uh, the enjoyment of the place, and for the connections, and for uh, and recreation. All right. See ya. Thank you, uh, Mark and Darren, uh, uh, Andre and um, Andre and Juan Camino. Okay, so yeah, just to start it off, I guess, uh, we'll talk about how we kind of got to the idea. So the first thing we considered was, yeah, the areas around the lot actually, uh, in the way that they can actually influence what we, or where we put things. So on the top portion, we have, yeah, the river along the side that uh, gives us a really long uh, possibility for public spaces there, as well as the Arceras Park and other um, notable public areas on the top. So we kind of situated certain portions there as well as in the bottom right because uh, for public spaces because yeah there are major access points from the roads as well as those other uh, factors from uh, external to the site and then from there on we kind of uh, decided to use the multi-use idea but in a different way so we kind of made uh, certain areas overlap that way it's not just a single use for everything while still also trying to implement a uh, Kind of private area for the residents so the pink area in the middle is actually where we're going to situate the residential area 
it's actually surrounded by parks or green spaces to act as a buffer or transition between the private area and the more public spaces. So that way it creates like a private community without creating barriers. And if for people who are coming into the area, for example, from outside, they don't need them to see or go to the residential area because they're, every place that they might want to go to is from or on the borders or possibly even the parks, like farthest. So other than that, we also use the Riverside for a public market um, near to the residential area. That way, uh, the locals there can, for their daily needs, they can just go to the market uh, right next to them. It's easier access for them. And then we also have a transportation system or, like, or two hubs on top and bottom to help the area circulate. That way, there's, a, um, there's less need for private vehicles. And then there's also a cultural or institutional area uh, situated around that kind of helps divide the spaces more and kind of gives purpose into it as well. And then the roads itself are divided to major and minor roads, but they're situated in a way that they don't actually break the spaces, but actually go around them as to let each space develop on its own without in, uh, having to consider the fact of like road regulation and specifications. Okay. Anything else? Uh, yeah, Andre will uh, be saying this more. Okay, so sir, while developing this master plan, there are like five major points that I wanted to uh, realize within our vision. So first is the cultural center or the government institutions. So I actually previously did a Taft Avenue redesign before in my planning subject. And what I realized is along that strip, it's actually part of the university belt and there's so much important historical buildings that are educational. And so there are two theories that I wanted to implement into this idea. So in here, right in the spot between the city hall and BNU, I wanted to create that idea that the, the government and the school institutions can have a place to work together. So in this culture, cultural or institutional spot, it will be sort of like a center for development of the students to really put out their work into the real world in cooperation possibly with the government. So, so here's the idea, like how we iterated it. So here we have the main institutional building that is dispersed to different areas. And over here, we have the main commercial area that we wanted to incorporate with the RSRS Forest Park and the terminal because we wanted to increase the transparency of the Forest Park since from what I've known from my colleagues is that it's actually quite empty because there's no supporting spaces around it. So we wanted to diversify the spaces in between those two. Uh, so here we just added main transport terminals for the area. Then in here, in terms of how we planned out the green spaces, we wanted to connect the forest park to the river and back to the city hall. So that's why it's dispersed in this sort of pattern. And second point is actually in this residence, we wanted to specifically make it for the homeless because one other specific problem I found within Metro is that there's almost like a million people that are homeless. So we want to bring them into this centerpiece sort of part so that we can increase the transparency between them and other social classes. So in a way, we wanted to counteract that uh, difference between the social classes. So in relation to the cultural and institutional parts, the, they can actually be used by the homeless people because uh, based on the book that you've recommended us, I've read like some of the other chapters, it said that knowledge should be dispersed to the lower income community. And so that is an idea we're trying to pursue over here. And yeah, so another main idea we want to emphasize is these minor roads, some of them will only be accessed by pedestrians with no vehicles because we wanted them to have spaces that are free from motor vehicles that are free from denoises. So 
that's our answer to that. Yeah. So far. Uh, that's it. Is that uh, it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, that's the reason why I asked. Uh, you know, there's more additional ideas because I can really see in the drawings that probably there are more ideas in this uh, presentation. And then I'm lo and behold, I I heard you know that uh, you guys uh, remembered to apply what you learned from cities from small planets. And uh, I'm very impressed that uh, you you guys introduce an, uh, an area for the underprivileged. Uh, it's rarely uh, provided. And then probably, who knows, it can be your, our design fix project, like creating a typology that will sort of balance the, the commercial aspect of this, uh, this area. So, uh, I love that uh, I love that idea. So um, when it comes to the planning, it's still very early to to concretize everything. Especially, I have a feeling that you're not familiar yet how big buildings should be, how uh, how big blocks should be, uh, because you already introduced prematurely uh, the subdivision of the blocks by introducing minor roads and the major roads. Because before you can naturally do this. We need to analyze the traffic flow of the area and the traffic density. Uh, you may or may not introduce new roads, or you may even reduce it if you really want the decentralization. Uh, so, yeah, but I appreciate the effort that you are already thinking of that because probably you don't want this place to choke. But, no, but, but just to clarify, lang, not because your city has a lot of roads, it means that it won't have traffic. Okay. So uh, the, the bubbles that I'm seeing uh, are still very rudimentary, meaning it's still very elementary at this stage. We are still going to develop it as we learn along the process, uh, but you know, uh, retain the idea about the housing for the other privilege and then the cultural aspect and probably the rest will just trickle uh, from, from that. Uh, and then you have the commercial aspect that will sustain at the viability of this uh, development, all right? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, uh, you, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mino. Uh, so I guess we go to um, who's next? Um, Kier and Dano. Are are they the last guys? Uh, Kier and. Our leggy, Janil, favorite man. <laughs> Are you really? Okay. Last favorite mga tayo ni. Eh. Best friend ni Lance. Oh, best friend ni Lance. Ano nang yari? Mahal na mahal yung drafting class. Is <laughs> your class? Mas mahal ni Janil yun. <laughs> ano, ano? Favorite yun niya, diba? Um, oh, parang nakwento sa akin ni Janil yan. Pero... <laughs> pero parang di ko naman si Yosef. Si yung kay Lance. Yung kay Lance. Si Lance si Janil. Si Lance from last term. Si Lance and Sir Arlegi. Oh, nag-away daw eh. They found that last term. <laughs> okay, see you again. Okay, so sir, this was the summary of our um, sketches. So the first thing we did was we... Go ahead. You're on we we d decided to um, make the pedestrian path so that it could cut through most, if not all of the areas, so that all the areas were accessible to each other. So another um, idea we wanted to possibly do uh, use was to sort of introduce a tram line um, in the same possible pedestrian path. Okay. And then we also um, placed the commercial areas near nearer to the city hall because we sort of wanted to cater to the needs of the surrounding areas which is 
the schools, so PNU and UPM. And then um, within the 15 hectares, there were also a number of government um, buildings. So we wanted to move those government buildings near towards the city hall and the ombudsman's office. So um, that's where we placed them in the purple. So the mixed use, mixed use lots are, um, we wanted to mix a mix between institutional and the commercial lots. Okay. okay, then as for the um, plazas or the open green spaces, we allocated one large plaza by the Araceros Forest Park because as of the moment, it is uh, isolated. And um, so what, what we planned was to expand the open green space outwards towards the um, Pasig River. Also, um, taking into account that the lot opposite this is um, a, a university. So as a way, this could be a way of um, transition from the school to this more leisure area. Also, the other plaza or vista that we added was by the city hall because we were initially planning to uh, um, sort of unisolate the city hall and make, since there is a street in between, um, make it sort of a transition area where um, the commercial spaces around uh, this particular vicinity could be accessed from the city hall and to the city hall. Um, as for the orange blocks, um, we made them residential areas because we, as what Kier said a while ago, we take we took into account the demographic within this area, which include uh, majority students and um, uh, workers and uh, maybe small families. So uh, what we, we decided to place residential areas um, in conjunction to the city hall, where in the city hall and the surrounding commercial structures sort of acts as a center where the residents could access all their basic necessities and um, sort of work uh, within this vicinity. So it's sort of like a small community where everything is available. So yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, just a uh, factor in the, the comments that I provided uh, from the previous group, uh, such as uh, the efficiency ratio. Uh, as you can see, you, see, you have a lot of open spaces here. And at the same time, um, the blocking of, uh, of the zones uh, will still need more development. That's why I encourage everyone to do it manually. That way it's, uh, for some reason, kasi, uh, it's more human to to draw cities, uh, you know, manually, and then you just uh, transport it digitally. That's why I appreciate the the drawings of Sila Kevin and Tracy, uh, because uh, that's actually the how it is done. When I, as I remember it, when I was working for offices uh, that uh, plan cities, I'm going to show you examples of that later on. Because right now, um, although I, I'm not discounting the the, the richness of the ideas that you provided and the rationality behind it. Uh, it feels like this is your first time to do it. And then when you're looking at this plan and then you look at the other plans, you know that you know this can still be developed. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, compared to the first group, uh, we're in, uh, you can already demarcate the pedestrian areas and then the, like, you know, it's it was zoned carefully. And um, the, the only thing that I can, probably provide the negative comment on is the integration of the physicality of the place, which is also not in this scheme uh, just yet. But uh, what I like about your proposal is the integration of the existing demographics of the area, which is very, very important. So uh, you, the, the other groups can have the same uh, direction if they want to. Uh, if you want to have you know, um, 
housing for the underprivileged, you can do that. You can also have the uh, address the same demographics if you want to. Uh, but definitely, this will be a city hall that is like a it's like a mini town uh, that makes the visit to the city hall like a destination. Okay, so where are you going to city hall? So when you say city hall, it's an errand that you need to get some papers. But you know, we want to make it like it's a pleasure to go there because it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a destination basically. Uh, it's something that uh, is memorable, something that is, uh, that feels like a community, uh, etc. Right now, I think what went viral recently is the the coffee shop. Have you guys been there? The coffee shop. Uh, initiated by Mayor Isco. Are you guys familiar? Mm -hmm. I've seen pictures lang eh. Oh, pero eh, maybe share it. Ano, uh, marami ako nakita ng YouTube na ano eh. They should take advantage of the, the popularity. But uh, uh, that coffee shop, it is a mini coffee shop, but it it creates a community because it's identified with the city hall. So try to imagine creating a town that is identified with the city hall that has all the amenities that you need that uh, that will entice you to live near this area. And um, instead of having a museum, you have the city hall as a catalyst for development. You know, and then uh, uh, I understand the concern of the first group about the, 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 the zones across the river, that it's all industrial. That should not be the attitude. In fact, when Palafox was planning Rockwell, he wanted Rockwell to become the model of uh, a city that uh, faced the polluted Pasig River because he wanted everyone to see that uh, waterfront development is the only way to go. We cannot turn our backs to the river. Um, you guys, so uh, you guys need to, you know, to create that heroic aspect of planning. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I also appreciate that the Estero proposal of Jericho and Mac because they face the Estero. Because if everyone is facing the Estero and everyone has a communal uh, ownership of the place, the chances of polluting it, the chances of taking it for granted will be much, much less. But if you turn your backs away from it, just like uh, we did with Pasig River, it became polluted. And now SMC is planning to put a an over ano, an overhead expressway, uh, uh, elevated expressway. Ngayon pa lang nga, guys, nakabukas yan, tinatapunan ng basura. What more? Kung nakakover yung tinatapunan mo ng basura. Can you imagine, guys? Although, so siyempre, the development of SMC, they will say that, uh, I'm not doubting Ramon Ang naman. I think he has good intentions, but we need to take into account the culture of Filipinos. Uh, He's allotting a lot of budget in the cleanup of the Pasig River. But the moment it gets built, Filipinos, you know, let's be honest, we're very poor at maintenance. So I'm not sure if it's going to last. So uh, let's phase our developments towards the Pasig River. Uh, so instead of uh, making it like a back of the house, it's part of the development, it's part of the anchor. City Hall is an anchor, Pasig River is an anchor. Uh, then uh, probably we'll just. Uh, increase the, the boundary line up to the city hall, just so, just, so, just so you can propose developments. I want you guys to propose uh, uses uh, in the Mihan Garden. Uh, when I say uses, I'm not talking about zones. Huh? I'm talking about they have uh, uh, like you know, a garden, some sort of a garden with cafes, etc., so that you can utilize the open space, uh, things like that, OK? So uh, also at the back of the of the Metropolitan Theater, that way people will appreciate it. Although it's a uh, it's a uh, it's the back side of the theater. All right. Okay. Do you have any questions, guys? <laughs> Sir, hmm. can you repeat the one that you were saying about your saleability? How many Okay. Uh, when you are planning something, actually. You, it's most applicable in city planning, also in retail planning. Um, you need to have a minimum of 70% saleability, meaning when you compute all the areas of the saleable areas, 70% siya. 
If it's more than that, uh, wala na. In fact, when you prepare an error tabulation uh, for the developer, in fact, during the presentation, I remember um, they won't look at the design yet. The more commercial uh, developers, they will look at the error tabulation first. How many percent is saleable? How many percent is saleable? Jaka nila titingnan yung mga creative ideas niyo. Ganon na nangyayari sa sa development. So uh, meaning, uh, kailangan yung mga roads, yung mga hindi na bebenta, thirty uh, percent lang. Do you get it? Kailangan yeah, yeah, sir. residential, commercial, nasa 70%. Institutional, it's not. Institutional, pwedeng, ano, pwedeng i-exclude yan. Pag cultural, like that. Pero yung mga housing, kailangan kasama siya sa uh, sa uh, sale, saleable. Alright? Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Sir, um, uh, we have the class maps. Uh, oh yeah, see it. Let's look at it quickly. See. Uh, I can't get the, the file is so big. 